I've always had this just hankering when I look at a map or a globe to want to see with my own eyes what each place looks like. And so it's a pursuit, it's a life passion. The Keen Ambassador team is a close-knit group, uh, and the three of us had talked about going to Mongolia for years at team meetings. Uh, Jeff, uh, a master falconer, uh, as well as an incredibly accomplished aerial athlete, was interested in meeting and learning from the eagle hunters of Western Mongolia. Crystal Wright, uh, who had spent significant time in the eastern part of the country, was very enticed at the prospect of documenting us flying and traveling through the western part. For me, it was a chance to fly paragliders in a locale that has never been flown and visit a place that I've read about for years from great explorers like Roy Chapman Andrews. What I was really surprised about was when we landed in Olgi, how quiet it was. I'm not sure I've ever been anywhere in the world and gotten off a plane and had a place affect me that same way. I'd have to agree with flying to Olgi. I think that was quite a special moment just to see how remote and disconnected we could become. I've been to Mongolia before and experienced the other side of the country. And so for me to return to Mongolia five years later, I was really excited to come to the West. One of the amazing things about being an ambassador or traveling abroad is the ability to connect with communities. With a little bit of work ahead of time, um, typically you can find a great nonprofit if you wish to. So you're a paraglider in Mongolia? Yes, yeah. <laughs> I was. <laughs> yeah? Uh, in Mongolia, for example, we utilize the paragliding community in order to connect with an incredible nonprofit called Mongol Ecology Center. The Mongol Ecology Center's main goal is to protect the national parks and to create a sustainable national park system that will thrive for the next hundred years. Can you talk a little bit about national parks in Mongolia and how did you see the need arise for a park system? I was educated in the U.S. and uh, one of the things that I would do in my spare time is go and visit U.S. national parks and I was very impressed and inspired. When I got back home, one of the things I realized is that some of the Mongolian national parks, the infrastructure wasn't there. The Mongol Ecology Center was established 10 years ago to help to strengthen the national park system in Mongolia. In order to bring that best practices, we asked the international volunteers who worked um, in the western countries in the national parks to come and work with NEC and to help the Mongolian organizations and the government so that we're developing it in the right way. I think Mongolia is different than other places I've been due to the vast landscape and the minimal amount of people. I think that the majority of the nomadic people in Mongolia might measure their days by walks of their animals and livestock. There's probably one person per 100 square miles once you get out of Ulaanbaatar. And that in itself is a shocking Thing to witness. To promote that into the, the younger generation, there's a program called the Junior Rangers, and kids from Ulaanbaatar ages 14 to 17 are becoming more and more passionate about protecting some of these open spaces. And what the Junior Ranger program is attempting to do is to give these kids some real insights into the nature of the environment they're living in and the history of the place, but also to give them pride in the park. In the U.S., for the Junior Ranger program, kids come to the park and then they spend a day with the ranger and then they become Junior Rangers. So we took the idea of the Junior Ranger and then we actually extended the program to be an all-year-long program. So we renovate their whole classroom to equip them so that they're studying in an environment, that they're having fun and the things are provided for them. And some of the kids never left their village before. So we try to educate every kid not just to be conservationists, but also become community leaders and as responsible citizens. And the hill is one my nice mountain, maybe it will be also good for you. Um, today, no, today we will go okay. around here, right. and tomorrow we will go up. Up to here at base camp? Base camp here. Okay. okay. And the marching pick is here. 
I definitely have that stubborn attitude. If I'm on an expedition, I should be self-sufficient. I should be doing everything myself and organizing all the logistics. And with this trip, by incorporating local help, it's actually a wonderful feeling because we get to be a part of the local economy and help support them. And I think that has always been probably one of the greatest aspects of travel. It's always been about the people. My name is Lina Amanjol. I'm from Bayanulgi province from Mongolia. Tourism is helping many people. For example, we have tourist drivers, guides, cooks, camelmen, horsemen. I uh, work as a guide in uh, the Solgi area. I wanted to improve my English and I wanted to work with tourists, so that was good income. <laughs> It took us four days just to get to the National Park entrance from when we started our travel. And then another three days to hike up into the spot where we could eventually launch our paragliders. We are in this glorious uh, space where Russia's like Shh, right there, and then Kazakhstan and China. Beck, which way is China? <laughs> okay, well, see, I just got it mixed up. It's, all right. it's impossible to do without, in this case, Kazakh guides that are, you know, kind of ushering us into their land and being able to explore with them and, and hear the tales of, of them growing up here and, uh, you know, how much a camel costs and things like that are, are, are things that I'll never forget. How long have you been coming here? Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the beauties of having a tourism economy is that it, it does, it, it makes it accessible to anyone. You know, moving among these massive mountains. If you have to do it all on your own, it's incredibly foreboding, uh, you know, even for, for us. And so to have local support, you know, it's the way forward. Has it changed? Yeah, it's changing a little bit. Actually, the glacier is changing. Mm. It's melting completely. Well, I mean, I, I think the plan today is to pack for a few days of, of bivy flying. I think it's like a six or a seven hour hike to where we're gonna sort of stage or base camp for the night and then get a super early start tomorrow to hike up and get into the high mountains uh, early enough to maybe get the wings out and, and hopefully get in the air. The real goal today is just to enjoy every step of the way and be psyched to be here now and get the full value of where we're at. As excited as we were to paraglide, it was really interesting to realize that most of the locals, including our guides, had never seen anybody pull a paraglider out and run off a mountain and fly away. It created a buzz of excitement around what types of new tourism were being attracted to their national parks. Funny, we're on our way to go visit the eagle hunters, and I can imagine being out here and hunting with an eagle. It would be um, pretty ideal. This is an incredibly beautiful place, and something that I've dreamed about seeing for well, for a long, long time, for sure. We're on our way to go visit the eagle hunter village, and the sky looked amazing. We decided to pull off and hike up this butte into this valley. And there's clouds popping, and. It looks like a, potentially a really good flying day. Once we were in the air, it was obvious 
how special it was to be flying a paraglider in Mongolia. In that national park, there's just pristine nature and wilderness in every direction. And I just don't think as tourists, we're used to seeing that untouched wilderness, that untouched nature. I've flown in over 30 countries and Mongolia is by far one of the most unique. Even if you land in the middle of the Himalaya, there will be folks running out, welcoming you, living there, farming. Whereas in Mongolia, it's conceivable to not see another person in most places that you may land. Ended up in this pass, more horses, pretty amazing hour and a half flight. Uh, stoked, good way to end the trip. Driving Russian vans off road through river crossings and burly rocky terrain proved to be significantly consequential for the vans themselves. So uh, the little van I could, who's currently having a little hiccup. Uh, we're here in far west Mongolia and on our way to the Eagle Hunters. And uh, yeah, you know, turns out traveling in Mongolia requires a little bit of patience. So here we are. There's no water left. <laughs> One of the drivers ran the vehicle out of water and decided it would be a good idea to replenish the radiator with ice cold river water thus cracking the engine block immediately while we were all trapped inside. Smoke started billowing into the back of the van and the only way out was through a door that opened from the outside. It took a little bit, but we eventually clambered out, happy to breathe fresh air. Come to Mongolia, let's go fly paraglider. Yes, what could go wrong? Fun. Even though we were having minor transportation issues, we were excited to be on our way to visit a Kazakh eagle hunter and his family. One of the reasons I was most excited to come visit Mongolia was to experience this as a falconer in the United States for the last 20 years. The tradition and cultural heritage of eagle hunting by the Kazakh people in Western Mongolia was going to be a highlight for me to experience on this trip. Falconry is the oldest relationship between man and animal. It's a lot like stepping back in time. In many ways, this landscape hasn't changed for thousands of years. And the thing that intrigues me most about falconry is that it's a relationship based on equality. If the bird didn't feel like it was an equal partner in the process, then it would just fly away. And the premise of falconry is that you form an advantage in this bird's life so that it chooses to hunt actively with you and the reward is that you end up sharing the spoils at the end of the day. And I think that we have a lot to learn uh, from each other. You know, for me, I gain uh, an amazing experience and perspective that's taught me a lot that is relative to the rest of my life. And the centuries of knowledge makes me feel pretty grateful to be here. And hopefully I'll have the opportunity to learn more about this art that's, that's become a passion in my life. When people look at Mongolia, I feel like they jump to the assumption that it's only for extreme travel. And by coming here, it is incredibly accessible for anyone. Honestly, if you just know how to put on a pair of shoes and go for a walk, you can experience a lot of Mongolia. It is an incredible place to come and visit. There's so much beauty here. There's beauty in the mountains, there's beauty in the weather, and there's beauty in the people. And hopefully you get to be here with good friends where you can share that. My advice to anybody booking a trip to Mongolia would be to leave your expectations at home. Just enjoy every minute of it because you never know what's going to happen. Over the years, the three of us have traveled all over the world and what's become most important is when we visit these places, we visit them with the highest levels of respect and gratitude. You know, in so many ways, we're all exactly the same, all seeking happiness, but in the ways that we are different, those differences can and should be celebrated. Trips like this one definitely offer that opportunity. 
The thing with travel like this is that you just kind of have to take it as it comes. And that's one of the beauties of travel is that it forces you to you know, reconsider the, you know, the, the kind of whole measure of time.